The adoption of cloud-native capabilities and processes is one of the most important developments in the telecom sector right now. So I'm speaking with Azar Saeed, he's Global Chief Architect at Red Hat, about what is driving this trend. So Azar, from a Red Hat perspective, what does cloud-native mean for the telecom sector as a whole? From a Red Hat perspective, what we mean by cloud-native is that uh, the, teleco the telco is able to deploy uh, services, software, and capabilities in a much more dynamic way and be able to utilize their infrastructure in a much more efficient manner. That's what we mean from a Red Hat perspective. What a telco really needs to do is be much, uh, much more faster in terms of innovation and in terms of delivery of those services and capabilities. They couldn't do that on their existing infrastructure, on their hardware-based infrastructure. Now, with the change that's happened uh, with NFV revolution first, um, it's a step in the right direction where everything's becoming more software-driven. Now, further disaggregating the, so the set of software components into microservices will allow a telco to be able to utilize these capabilities in a much more efficient way and build an infrastructure that's highly resilient and highly dynamic, much like how the public cloud providers build their infrastructure um, and provide these type of software capabilities to consumers and to users. And so from a Red Hat perspective, what we really mean is that Telco is able to utilize these tool sets that exist to build these capabilities in-house and deliver those as services to their customers. Okay, so let's dive a little deeper. I mean, the, the adoption of cloud native processes and technologies, how, how will this actually benefit the CSPs and what kind of impact will it have on them in terms of the way they operate and, and what they can do internally and for their customers? So let's break this down a little bit first. I mean, what does cloud native mean for a telco environment? Well, it's about running, as we said, it's about running their applications and processes in a cloud native manner, which means decomposing their sets of applications or de disaggregating their applications into smaller set of microservices that can be now instantiated and brought up and torn down in a much more dynamic fashion. So when you build things, when you build your applications to microservices and when you run them, encapsulate them in containers and run them in containers, then you can actually use a technology like Kubernetes to manage those set of containers and bring them up and tear them down in a much more dynamic way. That thereby more efficiently utilizing the infrastructure and thereby building newer capabilities much faster by stitching these services together. So now if we have that definition in front and if we if that's what they can do with this cloud native technologies, then they need to retool themselves in terms of how to adopt this technology in terms of processes and people so that they can actually deliver this much faster. So if we go back a little bit, if you look at and the amount of time it takes for CSPs to initialize a service, and deploy a service and make that available to the customer so that they can actually eventually charge for it, it's a long cycle. Whatever we can do to actually shorten that cycle in terms of how applications are rapidly deployed and brought about into the services and then, you know, um, be charged for and then torn down when there is no demand for it is something that that entire cycle needs to be sped up and accelerated. And that's really what cloud native allows them to do. And to do that, they'll have to retool their processes. They'll have to retool themselves in terms of understanding these technologies pretty well. And more importantly, they have to become more software driven. The culture inside a telco needs to change from a hardware centric model to a much more software centric model and a software driven model. So that's quite a lot of change for the telcos to take on board. Um, where are CSPs right now in terms of cloud native adoption? I mean, have they actually started this yet? Some have started, others are still experimenting. Um, it is true that it is a big change from a telco perspective, but there are some factors that are driving this change. Let's say, what's the cost of not doing it? Well, the cost of not doing it is pretty high for them. Why? Because um, everything's being software driven. So for them to actually build software expertise and software capabilities, 
um, you know, it's important for them to do it regardless of whether they move down this direction or not. Now, when everything is software driven, then software is being deployed in hybrid in many different ways in hybrid cloud, private cloud, public cloud, even in bare metal environment inside their own infrastructure. So when this becomes a transformation journey for them overall from an infrastructure perspective, from a people perspective, and from a uh, processes perspective, then they need to be able to bring this whole thing together and build that particular infrastructure transformation, network transformation. Now, who's doing it and how are they doing it? Well, majority of these people are have started some sort of digital transformation journey, um, either on their backend infrastructure in terms of retooling their backend OSS, BSS capabilities, or um, on their front-end infrastructure with the NFV revolution that brought about a change in running network functions on a commercial off-the-shelf you know, hardware, uh, like the Intel-based hardware. Now, Cloud Native is essentially the next step in that journey where they move from hardware-based environment to a commercial off-the-shelf COTS-based environment with software and now the next step in that journey is to disaggregate that software further and move along that direction. So in some ways, people have started that particular cloud native journey with the NFV, but I think they need to take, go much further to be truly cloud native. Um, what we've seen some providers do is actually retool themselves extensively. They've been hiring software engineers. They've been building you know, um, processes and software capabilities internally in-house, while others are you know, um, outsourcing this to SIs to be able to build first in a given area and learn from that particular, um, with, the, with an event, I mean, from that instance, with an eventual goal of, uh, you know, doing it themselves. So um, some of the larger ones that, that come to mind who have done this extensively, some of the smaller ones, I guess, they're still playing catch up. Okay, uh, and so I guess one of the other big trends right now, of course, is is five G. Uh, is five G and the introduction of five G a catalyst for the adoption of cloud native by telco? That's actually a very good question, Ray. Um, if you look at the five G architecture and what five G proposals that came out originally, it's a services based architecture. So all of the implementations of five G core, particularly, are uh, done in a cloud native way using microservices and they're deployed using containers. Um, majority, if not, uh, you know, 99.9%, .9%, if not all, right? Um, today's implementations from different vendors for 5G core are cloud native in the, in the sense that they are microservices based and um, they, they run in containers. So that's already driving the CSPs to uh, adopt that and to go deploy that 5G core. And now when you go start to go deploy that 5G core, you have to learn those set of technologies and you have to understand how they operate. Now, so that's becoming almost a driving factor. The other driving factor is the pace at which you have to go deploy edge compute capabilities because of demand from customers around, you know, lower latency services, you know, high bandwidth capabilities, better video quality, better gaming capability. And of course, some of these, you know, um, esoteric or exotic use cases that we always hear about when we talk about 5G, which is the industrial automation, smart car and, and AR, VR and so on. But I mean, while these use cases seem so exotic to us right now, they are becoming also reality at the same time. So for those use cases, the demand for those type of use cases and the 5G core itself being cloud native, the, uh, you know, things are coming together. It's, it's almost like a perfect storm, if you will, that providers, CSPs have to retool to build a cloud native infrastructure to be able to go deploy these capabilities effectively and utilize their infrastructure much more effectively. Now, this is quite a, a big change for the CSPs. What would you say are the biggest challenges for them with the adoption of cloud native processes and, and the associated technologies? Um, I think uh, training, learning, um, probably people skills, 
I think is still a big challenge for them at the moment. And they are learning fast. They are trying to retool um, um, as quickly as possible. But to me, that's probably one of the biggest challenge. I think about two years ago or so, maybe technology wasn't there to address all their needs and requirements. But as time progresses and with the innovation of open source, the pace of change inside Kubernetes and inside the open source communities is rapid. Um, just in the last 12 months or, or 24 months, we've seen literally code, the amount of code that changes is more greater than 80% or 90% um, in the community in, in open source. So the pace of change is absolutely rapid. The amount of features that are coming in with every release of new open source, um, you know, cap um, like Kubernetes or OpenShift, Red Hat OpenShift is enormous. And um, so technologically, I think we are there. Capabilities wise, te technical capabilities wise, I think we are there. We have the tools, we have the capabilities. But I think the biggest challenge for them is to be able to utilize these, to be able to learn about these and to be able to up-level their skills so that they can effectively utilize these, these set of tools and then deploy them. Um, we are all aware that, you know, telcos in the past haven't changed as rapidly, uh, primarily because the evolution of this came from the phone business and phone business didn't change for a very long time until until the advent of internet. So um, now, as you see, the the eight year cycles have shrunk shrunk down to you know five year, then further shrink down to three year. Now we are talking about people deploying software almost on a monthly basis, um, and then it'll become into weekly basis. So that rapid change means they need to completely retool their processes. They need to retool their skills. And I think those are, those are the two big challenges, retooling their process and retooling their skills to really uh, harness the power of cloud native capabilities in their infrastructure. Okay, great. Um, now, if you could give one piece of advice to CSPs about the adoption of cloud native technologies and this shift in the way they, they operate and engage with their customers, what would that one piece of advice be? Yes, Ray, I think um, what CSPs really need to do is pick one service or pick one use case and then design, um, develop, deliver, and uh, you know deploy. If they go through that for one particular service, they will learn a lot. Don't try to boil the ocean and don't try to retool wholesale uh, when you don't have experience with cloud native technologies or cloud native capabilities. By doing this, what you will do is you will learn through the pitfalls and you, you will learn through the issues. And you will know how to retool your process and how to retool your capabilities in order to adopt this kind of an environment. You know, I have worked with many providers across the globe and I have some very interesting stories to share on that topic, but I'll leave it that for another day. Um, I think your behavior needs to change, the consumption models need to change, your processes need to change, and more importantly, the people need to really take advantage of the pace of change that's happening in the open source industry um, to actually build a cloud native um, you know, environment inside their infrastructure, inside their uh, organization. And they can do that effectively through starting small and building upon that incrementally. So that's a great piece of advice, Azar. Thanks very much. And thanks for joining us today and, and sharing your perspective on what it means for the CSP community to be adopting cloud native. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Ray. It was a pleasure talking to you. Mm -hmm.